Taylor's with us. Taylor is in Fresno, California. Hi, Taylor. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, so I barely started watching your uh, videos a couple of weeks ago, and right now I'm, ba- I'm on Baby Step 2, so I only have student loans, um, including some personal loans that I took out with some family members uh, to get me through school. I don't have any credit cards, and um, my car is paid off. So right now I'm trying to decide how to go about paying um, back my student loans, especially because um, it's 0% interest. I haven't made any payments before. Did you graduate? Um, And I I graduated in December of last year. Okay, cool. Yeah, so right after I got out, then COVID happened, and I wasn't making any payments. I I wasn't required to, so this would be the start of it. But I'm having a hard time thinking of how to do that because I'm going to be experiencing kind of some big life changes soon. Um, Currently, I'm living with my family rent-free. I'm not making a lot of money because of the pandemic. I'm at Target, and I'm making $20,000 a year. And um, I live in an area where... What's your degree in? I'm sorry? What's your degree in? My degree is in marketing. Okay. But I live in Fresno, California. So, what's that mean? I don't do um, marketing in there's Fresno. There's a lot of opportunity to grow here, and so I I would kind of need to move. There's no opportunity for marketing in Fresno, California. I of mean, course there, there is, is, but I would say more specifically for what I want to do, I want to do cosmetic marketing and like luxury retail marketing, and that just doesn't exist here. So are you open to moving to places where that does exist? Yeah, so that's kind of uh, what I was getting to next is I'm actually uh, waiting for my boyfriend to immigrate here. He's going, he's coming from um, Russia, and he's going to be immigrating here in just a few months. And we both want to move down to uh, Los Angeles together. Um, He wants to work at LAX, and I want to do some marketing down there. And um, with, there's just so many moving parts that it really scares me to start draining my savings. It should. And start paying for my uh, student loans. It should. That should scare you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is unwise, and that's why it would scare you. Um, mm-hmm. Because you're just, you just painted up this uh, fantasy situation that exists in L.A. in your mind and doesn't exist. If you can't find a way to do high-end cosmetic marketing in a city the size of Fresno, you are going to get slayed in L.A. Mm -hmm. This is not about the city. This is about you. Mm -hmm. And your mom and dad are dead set against your whole plan, aren't they? Um. I wouldn't say that. I would say they've been pretty supportive, but they are scared of the prices of rent, for sure. Well, it sounds to me like your perspective on this L.A. thing. You've not applied. You've not found any jobs. Am I wrong on that? Um, I actually did have a job lined up after college, but it fell through. Yeah, but I'm, talk- I'm not talking about the past. I'm talking about as we speak today and you go, we want to move to L.A., me and the boyfriend and all this mm-hmm. business. Do you have something lined up? Do you have some prospects, at least some targets? Um, I will say I haven't been as active as I should be in applying because it's so uncertain of when my boyfriend is coming, and I just don't feel comfortable moving down there by myself and handling rent by myself. If you were my daughter, here's what I would tell you. You need to stay separated from him until you establish yourself as a confident young woman in a career field. I think you're chasing a fantasy here that sounds very romantic and very different, and I think you're about to step in it. The bear trap's going to snap on your leg, kiddo. You need to establish your own independence as a sharp young lady, and then you'll be in a position to make better decisions about relationships. I'm a 60-year-old dad who has raised grown kids and has six grandkids. Um, I support ministries on sex trafficking and slavery, to end it all over the world. I just spoke to two young men here just in the lobby just a few minutes ago that was meeting with our family foundation that are from England working on the same issues. Um, It turns out not everyone is who they say they are. Shocking when you are sweet and young and naive. 
moms and dads, uh, not everybody's who they say they are. Now, not everyone immigrating from Russia is a bad person, and I'm not certainly not saying that. I, I have, you know, would have great admiration from someone wanting to leave communism and come to the greatest country in the world. Uh, but not everyone coming from Russia, attaching themselves as a boyfriend, meet me in L.A., we'll shack up together, is who they say they are. This I know. Um, and so I don't know that that particular young lady is getting ready to be the victim of a catfish, um, but uh, a scam. But it's very, it's as possible as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, in addition to that, and let me tell you what lends credence to that. Okay, I'm just the old guy that loves my daughters. Okay, and is wise. And um, uh, the way you get wise is you observe evil and you observe stupid, and you are a victim to it a few times, and it teaches you wisdom the hard way. And so uh, the fact that she has no freaking plan. Mm-hmm about where she's going to live, how she's going to eat or what her job is, and and has not applied herself to her career field at home in Fresno, tells me that same part of her brain that's not doing that is maybe susceptible to being harmed in a scam relationship situation. Now, that all went through my head, and I didn't say it out loud, but it's fair to our listenership to say that out loud, that that's why I'm saying that. That's why I said your parents are against it, because I was hoping and praying that her parents were speaking up, but they feel like they're not allowed to say anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were somewhat supportive. And, and so what, here's what's going on. There, there's, there's calculated risk where we look at it and we say, okay, uh, I'm going to go whitewater rafting, and I know that um, if I pay attention to the guide and I watch the video and I get in and I don't do something stupid in the boat, there's a chance that I'm going to get thrown out of the boat and I might bruise something, I might break something, but that's a calculated risk. And I you just take jumped that. out of an airplane the other day skydiving. Yeah, and, and you, were tra- yeah, you, had a, you, had, you were attached to somebody who knows what they're doing, there was really it was an automatic uh, computer no deployment on the chute. Yeah. Yeah. If we got below a certain yeah. altitude at a certain speed, these guys have done this thousands and thousands of times. Um, I didn't just go no. jump out of an airplane. Right. And that's I mean, what and LA so, looks like here. I'm going to wait until the Russian boyfriend shows up. Then we're going to move together. Then I'm going to try to find something in Los Angeles, which spits people out in about 30 minutes if you if you have a decent plan and sometimes. if it's not shut down by a governor well there's that too and and you've got an economy that has been severely uh, artificially uh, suppressed there and so she just didn't have a plan and it's not you don't have to take the jump off the cliff chasing the dream is not as romantic as they make it out in the movies it's not we and we just hope it works out no i mean it is it is a plotting practical plan and you take steps and you got to earn it along the way you don't just show up in LA and get the high glitz high glamour marketing job so there just wasn't any kind of a plan behind that which scares me about the uh, every element of the plan everything about that is too uncertain for her I'm not affected I'm not going to LA so it doesn't affect me Mm -mm. I'm not going to meet a a Russian person that I've never met in a relationship with and that that, so it doesn't affect me Mm -hmm. but you know she called us to ask us what to do and I I have to try to love someone that's calling here well and tell them the truth. Um, but I, I, I fear I didn't, um, I, if I had said all of that, I don't think it would have done any good because I think she's going to do whatever she's going to do. You gave great advice. I think her b- establishing her own career as an independent woman, and, and then we work the relationship out. But there's, I'm just not a fan of somebody that, if, if he's not willing to put a ring on it, uh, you shouldn't be willing to move to a city with him, shack up, and try to support him while he gets going. You establish yourself first. If he loves you and he's committed and he's in for the long haul, and I say this as a guy that's been married almost 23 years, then he'll wait and he'll be fine. And I would tell my daughter, Josie, that. Well, you and, know, oh, by the way, you make he your will own go decision. establish himself and prove himself to be an actual reality and not mythology. <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. There, there's a little test market here we're doing, you know, <laughs> just to establish. We call it in the business proof texting. We put something in the market to prove out the theory, to yeah. prove out the hypothesis before we launch the whole freaking thing. Mm-hmm. And then we, we find if it falls fa- on its face or not. And that's what we're doing here. So, um, yeah, the um, yeah, just just um, moms and dads, uh, if you got a 25 year old living in your house, 
uh, Meg Meeker, Dr. Meg Meeker, the speaking at the Smart Conference with Ken and I this weekend, would tell you it is your job to interfere in their life. Mm-hmm. Now, if they're on their own and they've established themselves, then, you know, good boundaries are in order. And they're paying their own bills and you're not giving them any money. But if you're providing them shelter or money, then it is your obligation to continue to speak into their lives. And if they don't like that, then they can go provide their own shelter and their own money. By the way, one of the ways that parents can do that, Dave, with adult children, because the dynamic has changed, is ask them some very straightforward, clear questions and and leave it to them. Because if you make a statement, a 25-year-old kid, even a 14-year-old kid is going to push back a little bit. But if you ask a question, it puts the ball on them and then they have skin in the game when you say, hey, things like... Um, do you have any jobs lined up? Do you have any targets of companies that you would like to apply for? No, she was have working they, at Target. Right. Yeah, that's right. Have, are they hiring? And let them sit with their own answers. Let them sit with the fact that they don't have an answer. At that point, once they begin and you get them to the place where they realize, ooh, I don't have a plan, this doesn't even make sense in my own head, then you got a chance to step in and go, hey, how can I help? How can I step in and help you make some some decisions on this? What are some things that you can do? But if you ask some piercing questions and leave them, be okay not talking, mom and dad. Let them wrestle with it. Um, you might find that that's a really great way to jump into that. But you got to be okay at some point going, I think this is a bad idea, but let me tell you why I think it's a bad idea. If there's some, red, I think it can yeah. harm you. If there's some red flags. I think it could harm you. To not call out red flags is not an act of love. It's an act of cowardice. Yeah, I agree. And so you've got to call the red flags. you got to say this is what it is. Um, we had a team member many, many years around here misbehave and uh, ended up having to leave due to the misbehavior. And as we revisited it with some of the leaders, they always said, well, you know, every time I had an interaction with this person, it always kind of felt weird. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever talked about it to each other. But if five of us had gotten together and said, you know, it feels weird. And so we developed a new saying after that. If it feels weird, generally, it's because it's weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a reason it feels that way, Mm -hmm. you know. And so investigate, poke into it. If there's a red flag, you know, there should, you, you know. And common dadgum sense should give some of you red flags on some things. And it, it's your job then, if you love someone, to poke into it. Now, again, if they're a freestanding household, they're 32 years old, they got two kids and they're a married couple, you don't have the right to just walk in there with your muddy boots. You, that's a boundary violation. But even then, you would treat them as a friend. And what would you do with your friend? What Ken said. What I would do with my friend is I'd start asking a bunch of questions that made them uncomfortable. Yeah. That's what I do with one of my personal friends, yeah. if that happens, versus parent, walking in and saying, you're stupid. I, as a parent, I don't ever want to get to a situation where my kid looks at me and says, why didn't you tell me, Dad? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Yeah. I'd yeah. rather be mad at me on the front end. I learned a new phrase today. I didn't know it was called catfish. <laughs> He's you still know. learning, folks. I'm still learning 60 something 60 years is still growing. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.